That's right. Who's hung like a horse? Now, Meizuki. Revenge is oh so sweet. Welcome, everybody, to the Neo 2 Unstoppable Onmyo and Ninjutsu build. And, yeah, <clears throat> that was in uh, New Game Plus. I'm actually going to turn on the game sounds a little bit so that uh, I don't drive myself crazy not being able to hear them. Um, and I will show you that was level synced as well. So my gear was less than it can be. So here you go. We are on Dream of the Strong. And that is level synced. And let me turn this up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to show you how this build is put together, where to get all of the gear and everything else. I am recording live. I'm not going to edit this in any way. I'm just going to show you where to get all of the goodies. Um, for those of you who don't know, a refined man of the underworld here in um, Dawn region, which is the fourth region of the game, in New Game Plus is probably one of the best farming spots for Amrita to level up. So if you're looking to level up, that's a good place to do it. <clears throat> now, on to the build. So for the equipment, I am running the Kawanami Kusarigama, which is part of the Ruler of the Riverside Yokai set. And you can get that set by killing our good friend. Hachisuka Koroku. So this guy here, you fight him in a number of missions. Um, if you want to farm the set, a good place to farm it is, I believe, is it Afterglow? No, it's the last mission here, Dream. So if you do Dream um, Japanese Heart Yokai Smarts, you can farm the Kawanami set from him there. Uh, for the um, for the uh, Phoenix Wing or the um, Switchclave that I'm using, you can farm that off of William. Easiest place to farm him. Is in the Blue-Eyed Samurai here. So you can just farm him until you get that. Use a farming set. For the Hino Rifle, um, that is part of the Exemplary Eye for Elegance, or the Swallowtail set, however you want to call it. You can get that set along with the headpiece, so I'm using the Swallowtail helmet. You can farm that, I believe it is Area 3. Yeah, right here in the mission, the Golden Nation. So that's where you want to go for that. And then for the uh, other piece, I'm doing the Golden Boy set, which is part of the Master Archer's Bow um, set. And you can farm that, the Golden Boy, uh, you can farm that, I believe, from the Dojo uh, guys. The Dojo Swordsman uh, Samurai. I got mine dropped, so I didn't actually craft that. Um, and then for the armor, I am running the Tatenashi set, which you can get from the 4th region, I believe it is. No, not 4th region. 3rd um, region? Yeah, over here, this submission, the Fallen Star. So you can get the smithing text from the boss in here. For the um, for the two uh, accessories, you've got the Yasakani Magatama and the Shuten Doji's Gourd. Um, and I'll go into the reasons for all of these here just in a minute. But I just want to show you where you can farm all of that. So Shuten Doji's Gourd you can get in Dream from Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
Mausoleum of Evil main mission. So you can farm Shifted Doji for that in here. And for the... Uh, oh, I didn't actually have the Shuten Dojis equipped, so it's much better if I've, I've equipped the Shuten Doji. Um, but you can get the Yasukani Magatama in New Game Plus automatically as reward from the final boss that you face off here in the Eye of the Beholder mission. So beat that on New Game Plus and you'll automatically get a Yasukani Magatama. Or you can also... Um, thanks for... Thanks to P-War for this tip. Uh, I believe it's in the fourth area, or fourth region in Abduction. You can uh, farm it right in the beginning. There's a uh, loot point that you can get. Um, you have two chances, just like in Neo 1, to get the Yasukane Magatama, and it is very near the shrine and very easy to get to. You just need to clear three enemies. It's right inside the Pakoda right when you uh, first get in the mission. Um, and you can farm it there. Now, once you have all of that stuff, you're going to want to be able to um, sort of temper it to the effects that you want. So for me, on the Kawanami Kusarigama, I am running Attack Bonus, Magic, uh, A+, plus, Life Drain, um, Imbue Lightning, Melee, Key Attack, Consumption, Summer Twilight donation, Duration, because I use Summer Twilight as one of my buffs, and Melee Key Damage. For the Phoenix Wing, I use that as my purity weapon. Uh, I have a Dex bonus up, Melee Attack, Key Consumption again, Break, Grapple, uh, Life Drain, and Active Skill Break. I do want to change those over to match up what I've got on the other Kusarigama, but I'm running the uh, Kusari, Kusarigama more often than Switchglaive at this point, because my Switchglaive skill isn't that high yet. For the Hino Rifle, uh, I've got Rifle Speed Up, Piercing Projectiles, Range Damage. The important one here is to get Damage Bonus Familiarity. I don't have that on my Master Archer's Bow yet. I still need to get it. Um, once I do, I can use either of these. Nice thing about the Master Archer's Bow is that it gives you plus 20% bow damage with the Yasukani Megatama, even though I only have one set piece equipped. Same thing for the Hino Rifle, because I have two Swallowtail. I'm getting an extra 3% damage reduction, and if I go critical, I get extra luck. I'm really doing it for the damage uh, taken um, buff on that set, so that's why I'm running those two. And I usually run Hino Rifle as my main and keep it equipped so that I get that extra 3% damage reduction. The reason I'm running the Kawanami Kusarigama is because it gives a 20% uh, yokai efficiency on all yokai abilities that I use. So that reduces the cost of the uh, yokai ability that you saw me using at the beginning of the fight there uh, by two points or two anima, which makes it easier to spam that ability. If you look at the Tatanashi, uh, well, actually, let's do the Swallowtail Helmet. You can see I'm going for Untouched Omeo Magic and Omeo Magic Power. Uh, I'm also trying to make sure that I keep my projectile damage as low as possible um, and my elemental damage. I've also, on all of these, uh, inherited plus attack all the way across the board, except for Gauntlets, which can get attacked by themselves, so I inherited Untouched Omeo Magic there. On all pieces, I have projectile damage down. Um, on the chest, I also have elemental damage taken redu reduced. Um, and importantly, I have this Amrita sub absorption uh, life of life recovery. So every time that I get some Amrita, I'm going to be getting my life back, which makes me quite a bit more resilient. I've also got the um, defense bonus Amrita gauge, and I am running easy target on the head. Uh, I would like to move this over to the gauntlets at some point and put something else on the head, but for now it's okay. And I'm just doing that to make it easier for you guys if you summon my revenant for help. Uh, for the gloves, I still don't have um, Omeo Magic Power, but I want to toss that in when I'm able to. That'll probably replace uh, either Defense or Shuriken and Kunai damage, but again, projectile damage down. 
Um, and for the waste guard, I want to swap this over as well to uh, have untouched Omnia magic. I don't have it yet. I do have key bonus, key recovery bonus for getting Amrita gauge. So the key recovery rate goes up the higher and more Amrita I have stored. I also have the tenacity effect so that uh, elemental effects like uh, poison or fire won't reduce me below zero and kill me if I run out of health. So that's kind of nice. And I get uh, winded recovery. So when you run out of key, you have your, uh, you get in a winded status while well, you recover more quickly with that effect. And with the Tatanashi Greaves, I also have faster winded recovery. Um, lower dodge key consumption, running speed and defense, and just some of those I'm going to swap out when I get untouched Omeo Inheritable uh, on those pieces. So I do have an orange uh, Omeo Inheritable, and let me talk to you about inheriting those in the Blacksmith. So if you go to the Blacksmith, the way that I got all of those special effects is you have this soul matching function here. And when you're soul matching, um, so I'll do one where I don't have the effects. So if you're soul matching, you can see I have two empty special effects here, right? If I choose a piece of equipment that has this, uh, I'll see if I can find one that is already done. There you go. So oh, I already have melee key damage on that one. Uh, let me find a different weapon that I can use as an example. Okay, so if I were to inherit from the um, familiarity maxed dual blood stain cleavers uh, to my other blood stain cleavers, you can see this red inheritable effect will transfer over to the the uh, new blood stain cleaver. So it adds effects that way. If you have no effects on your gear, another interesting thing to note. So if you have a piece of gear with no inheritable, like this piece, and you were to inherit... Hello, just curious if you know how to pass equipment level 160. I've seen level 170 equipment, but only blue dual swords off the mountain, huh? So if you were, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll answer that question here in a bit. So somebody, one of the viewers just asked uh, if I know how to pass equipment level 160, you need to get a level 170 uh, soul core, and then you inherit that onto a corrupted weapon, and then you use the corrupted weapon to, few, to uh, soul fuse or soul match with whatever weapon you want to get up to 170. Sometimes, very infrequently, you can also get level 170 uh, weapon and armor drops. Um, but when you have uh, weapons without conflicting effects, if you have no... Um, you can see on my captain spear on the right here, I can actually inherit or soul match that swordsmith's hammer to give me an inheritable on the weapon that didn't previously have an inheritable effect. So you can also expand your special effects by doing that. Um, so that's how you get all of those effects onto the gear. Um, you'll also need to temper a lot of your equipment. So if you haven't tempered before, uh, basically the way it works is you can go in here um, and you can choose which effect based on the quality of the umber site. So basic umber site you can use for these top three effects, quality here, fabled umber site here. The um, effects on my accessories are really, really important for the build. So you can see I've got the Yasukane Megatama giving me access to the full Tatanashi set, which reduces my projectile damage taken, my damage taken, gives me a damage bonus based on my equipment weight, further reduces damage taken and elemental damage taken by a good bit. Even though I only have four pieces equipped, I'm getting the full five set bonus off, this, off of this Yasukane Megatama. For the Yasakana Magatama, I am also boosting my defense through the magic. Um, I'm increasing my elemental damage, and I'll get into abilities in a little bit. But all of the abilities that I'm using basically um, frequently have elemental effects. 
I'm also getting Life Drain on Omeo Magic Hit on this accessory and Amory to gauge, uh, gauge Charge, whereas on this one, I'm increasing my Ninjutsu Damage Bonus, and I'm having Life Drain off of Ninjutsu Hit, and whenever I absorb Amrita, I'm also getting Pilatus. And on both of these, uh, I also want to have Elemental Damage taken Reduction, so I'm going to hopefully uh, be able to get that into one of the slots on my Yasukani Megatama eventually, so that I can get into um, a much higher Elemental Damage Reduction. So if you see my Elemental Damage taken here while guarding is minus 34%, but if you see my elemental damage taken, um, just overall, it's minus, minus 66.3%. So I can shrug off elemental effects. And that's basically the way you do it. So whether I'm using Omeo Magic or I'm using Ninjutsu, I'm going to be getting health back from both of those. And I'm getting increased damage um, off of my Ninjutsu. Um, you know, eventually when the expansions come out, we'll be able to get the special effects for those last two spots. Um, and when that happens, I'll be able to boost my damage even more. But for now, this is pretty good. Um, and let me go into abilities as well as uh, the um, soul cores that I'm using. So for the jutsu that you want to ready, um, you're going to want to have... Um, for ninjutsu, you want all three shadow arts maxed out. It's handy to have a couple of sneak thief and cat walking scrolls for clearing a board. And then you'll either want to um, equip caltrops if you're fighting something human, or if you're just clearing a level, it's good to have your shuriken um, equipped. I also tend to have Rankansen coin just in case I need it. I usually don't use it though. Um, for Omnio, you're going to want to have Arch Yokai Talisman, which will give you higher anima gain um, whenever you are absorbing Amrita or, or doing things that will help you generate anima. So that is how I charged my uh, Yokai ability um, you saw in the fight at the beginning of the video more quickly. It's one of the ways. You also want to run Extraction Talisman. Platus Talisman, because of the effects on my um, Shiten Doji uh, accessory, I don't really need this one, but I keep it there just in case I'm doing something that, um, you know, won't trigger the Platus effect, or if I want to stack it and uh, use it just before the boss fight, as you saw me do at the beginning of the video. Um, I'm also running Steel Talisman, which reduces the damage taken further. You can see I hardly got even scratched even though they were uh, beating on me at the beginning of the video. I didn't even need to move. Uh, Barrier Talisman is good for both your key recovery and to dispel Yokai Realms. Um, and then I keep Sloth to each of Sloth, Weakness, and Devigorate um, up at all times so that I can recast during combat if I need to. The final and the key to this elemental build is having seven each of your Fire, Water, and Lightning shots equipped you know i went around and checked out how effective explosive shot geyser shot thunderstorm shot and um you know the fire familiar and sensory overload and all of these other abilities the shikigami and everything i tested them out and by far the most useful and usable are the fire shots they don't do a whole lot of damage by themselves but you can cast them quickly and they're very useful for stacking your elemental effects and if you get two elemental effects stacked on an enemy you get the confusion effect confusion effect which makes it absolutely easy to destroy bosses and anything else um, i've completed all of the missions on new game plus with this build and it is stellar it's so easy to take out bosses with this build um, the Final piece are the Guardian Spirits. So I run Genbu and Ten Gen Kujaku. And I'll get into the stats you need to be able to use all of the effects for both of these. I'm running with Genbu as my primary Guardian Spirit for all kinds of reasons. So not only do you get Stalwart, which is um, anytime you're casting Omeo Magic, you cannot be interrupted or knocked down. The only way that the enemy can stop you is for a grapple attack. 
right? So as long as you're not getting grappled, you're not going to get knocked down or stopped when you're casting Omnia Magic. Hugely important for a caster. Damage taken again, that stacks with my Tatanashi set, so you can see my overall damage reduction is very high, as well as the elemental damage taken, which also stacks with all of the other effects, so that I can basically just laugh at whatever enemy elemental effects are coming in. Importantly, though, on Omnio Magic Hit, this last effect here, I'm getting an animal bonus every time I cast an Omnio Magic spell. If you look over at Tengen Kujaku, as a secondary, I'm also getting an anima bonus for elemental attacks. So as I'm casting my Omeo elemental spells, I'm getting even more anima, right? And those two combine and synergize very well together. If you look at the, um, the yokai abilities that I have, I'm running Otake Maru, Ryomen Sukuna, and Maelstrom Onibi. Um, the reason for that is Otake Maru is the ability that you saw me use that has the swords, elemental swords, come out of the sky in a big AoE and did a lot of damage. So that one is very effective. Ideally, on each of these, what I would like to have is minus attunement cost and what's called um, Yokai ability damage all. So not this one, but if you have one that says all, um, then... So like this one says efficient yokai abilities all, that will affect all yokai abilities, whereas this yokai ability damage only affects Otake Maru. But I haven't been able to get lucky enough yet to do yokai ability damage all and um, this minus one attunement cost for all of these three yet. So I'm just using the ones that I have. These ones still work fine. Um, ideally, you want to have that so that you can do more damage. Um, the Otake Maru Soul Core, in, in addition to the ability, um, it also gives you more anima, plus when you confuse an enemy, you get more anima on top of it. So you're able to just spam this ability very, very quickly using your elemental magic. Um, for Ryomen Sukuna, the, again, you're getting an enemy confused anima bonus. You're getting an anima bonus for Omnio Magic Hit, and I'll show you a tip on that really quickly. So in your stats, because I've got all of those uh, anima bonus on Omnio Magic Hit, you can see anima bonus on Omnio Magic Hit is now A plus for me. So every time I'm casting an Omeo Magic spell, I'm getting a bunch of anima. You combine that with the anima bonus, elemental attack, B+, I'm getting more. If they're confused, I'm getting even more. So you can see how you can quickly, um, you know, stack your, your anima so that you can cast your yokai abilities. And on top of it is I've got efficient yokai abilities all, which is super helpful. Um, going back to the Guardians and the Yokai abilities, the reason why I have Maelstrom Oni B um, is because this will let me, if I use it, and it only costs four points to use, that gives me a water elemental buff. So I have inherent lightning on my weapon already. Um, and if I want to do water so that I can stack confusion with melee attacks, all I need to do is cast this, and I've got the water buff. So I can do lightning attacks until I stack lightning, cast this, which will actually do some um, saturation effect to the enemy, and then I just hit him with my melee weapon again really quickly, and then I'll be able to stack um, confusion through my melee attacks pretty fast. Um, and you can also use samurai abilities to do a similar thing, but this is just kind of handy to be able to choose an elemental effect that you can stack on your normal weapons, which with Kusurigama um, tend to stack very, very quickly um, because you have a rapid hit ability. Now on Tengen Kujaku, I'm basically doing the same thing. So I have Otake Maru, um, which is good to take out big enemies, but I use, I swap over to Tengen Kujaku if I'm clearing a board, right? So that gives me the enemy treasure Amrita and Kodama sensor. Um, and it's kind of useful to have those effects as you're running through a board. And on this one, instead of using uh, the Domen uh, sorry, Sukuna, um, 
which also incidentally one thing I forgot to mention is that you can use this to stack confusion very quickly too so if you need another way to stack confusion you can do it here but with Ten Gen Kujaku, this Nurikabe does a ton of damage, and it only costs two to use. So you can use this whenever you want, just fighting normal enemies, basically, as you're cruising through the board with this build. You'll have plenty of anima to use, and you can just smash things with Nurikabe. Um, and then I'm using Maelstrom Oni B again for the same reasons as the others. So let me finish up with the stats that are required to use this build. Um... You will see that I am currently 234. You're able to get this a uh, little bit lower and still be effective. You don't need to have your Dex and Magic maxed out. As soon as I get both of those um, to 99, I'm going to be dumping all of my points into Stamina because the equipment that I'm using is very hard or very heavy. You can see that I'm at equipment weight 36 of 2, or 36.2, sorry. Uh, out of 43.1 which gives me an 83.9 percent equipment weight which puts me at agility c and i'm really slow my key power uh refresh and recovery rate is is slow so i want to ideally get that down below 70 percent equipment weight and in order to do that i'm gonna have to bump my stamina way up but I wanted to show you guys at this point because you need heart of 27 combined with strength of 8 and stamina of 27 um, and then these stats pretty high in order to use all of the um, guardian abilities that you want to have access to. So in order to use both of these you need those stats, right? Um, and you know you really want to be able to have the secondary effect which is animal bonus elemental attack on tengen kujaku when you're running that as your secondary guardian spirit so those are the stats that you're going to want to go for from here on out i'm just going to max out dexterity and magic at 99 each and then pump everything else into stamina so that i can get my equipment weight down unfortunately in neo 2 there is no weight reduction um, special effect on your armor. So at this point, we're kind of stuck with just having really high stamina. I'm hopeful that as the expansions come out, we're going to get the weight equipment weight reduction bonus. Um, and then I'll be able to have less points in stamina and still have a reasonable agility. But even with me being as slow as I am right now, it's still incredibly effective, this build. Um, and I don't mind having to run slow given all of the effects that I have. I mean, you know, going back into my stats. So, elemental damage is up 12%, damage bonus familiarity, melee damage unscathed, twilight is up. You have defense bonus for hammery to gauge, stalwart, elemental damage taken guarding, elemental damage taken overall is 66.3% down. I'm taking, you know, a third less from projectiles. Um, and then let me show you if I can find it. Just the overall damage reduction, uh, which helps out too. Oh yeah, so down here at the bottom, you can see the Yokai Ability Damage All effect, so I've got that from something as well. Trying to find the damage taken, there you go. So I also have a 14% damage taken reduction overall. So you can see, I mean, I can stand there and let Meizuki or Gozuki beat on me and just cast spells, and they won't do anything. Even grab attacks? If you're running all of your buffs at the beginning of the fight, and particularly um, steel, then you're not going to be... I mean, they tickle you even with grab attacks. So it's a highly resilient build. You're regenerating your health a lot. Um, and that reminds me also in the Hidden Tea House, you, you want to see the plan. Story. <clears throat> Here to Toyotomi, and everybody is using this, but... It's not just the Amrita loot bonus, but really the life recovery on Amrita absorption, which stacks with the um, 
life recovery, amrit absorption on my chest. So those two stack and I'm getting about 56 a tick back every time I get hit. Plus, whenever I'm attacking something with melee attacks, I'm also draining life. So whether I'm casting spells or attacking with melee, I'm getting my life back. So you can see this is an incredibly resilient build, very sur survivable. Um, you can't get knocked down or interrupted as long as you're casting Omeo, and you can just devastate bosses. So that is it for the build. I hope you guys enjoy and find this useful and gives you some ideas to think about for your own builds. Look forward to seeing what you all uh, come up with. There are a lot of good build guides out there and blacksmithing guides. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And I will see you back for more Neo 2 in the near future. Thanks for watching.